Hi, and welcome to our series of application-based videos. In this episode, we'll go through the Environment ELO37 General Purpose Voltage slash Current Converter to measure the signal from a CO2 probe. So the ELO37 is in a unique place in the environment lineup. Whilst other converters are used to measure specific parameters like AC current, temperature humidity, and temperature, the ELO37 can accept measurements from almost any third-party sensor or transducer that provides a 40 20 milliamp signal or voltage. The ELO37 has four channels. Each can be configured in three ranges, 40 20 milliamp, plus or minus two and a half volts, and plus or minus 10 volts. So if we take the cover off the ELO37, you'll see that we have a number of screw terminals uh, for each of the channels, and also screw terminal for the actual power supply if you wanted to power your sensors. Now you'll see above the actual terminals for the channels that uh, each of them has a jumper. So this means we can actually adjust each of the channels to either uh, take a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, a plus or minus two and a half volt uh, range, or a plus or minus 10 volt range. So at the moment, all the channels are uh, on the bottom two pins uh, that are shorted, which means that they're on the plus or minus 10 volt range. So if we wanted to, for example, to have 4 to 20 milliamps on the first channel, we take the jumper out and put it across the top two pins. And that makes it 4 to 20 milliamp. And if we wanted to do uh, channel two as 2.5 volts, you can either take the jumper off uh, and just connect it to just one of the pins. It doesn't matter which one, just so you hold it in place. Uh, channel 3 we can leave as uh, plus or minus 10 volts and channel 4 we can also leave as plus or minus 10 volts. So you can actually mix and match uh, your uh, inputs with different ranges. Now if you look at the left hand side you can see that you can actually power uh, your sensors either from the environment network or from an external power supply which would then plug into the screw terminals. So say for example uh, you wanted to use the environment network voltage to power your sensors. Uh, so what you do is you'd get the jumper out and you would then short the two pins over here like that. Now that would mean that the environment network cable which carries uh, the voltage from the data logger would then power uh, your sensors. Now if you wanted to plug in an external power supply you can then take the jumper out and then uh, basically uh, disconnect it or connect it to one of the pins just to uh, stop it stop you from losing it and you plug in your uh, power supply uh, through there and this would then power your uh, sensors. Now, some sensors uh, are already powered, uh, so you, you might not need to use these, as in the case today with the CO2 sensor. It has its own external power supply, um, and it doesn't need to use either of these options. So we have uh, today the uh, Rotronic CO2 probe, which we sourced for a customer who wants to measure the CO2 levels in an egg incubator in their factory. So this is an analog probe using non-dispersive infrared technology, or NDIR for short, which is used to measure carbon dioxide uh, for incubators. NDIR sensors are an efficient and reliable method of measuring gases as they have no contact with the gas. This works on the principle where infrared radiation is absorbed by CO2 molecules. So an infrared light, which is a source signal, passes through a chamber that consists of the gas. In this case, we're trying to detect CO2. And at the receiving end is a detector with an optical filter in front of it, which is selected to take in the wavelengths associated with the CO2. So the probe that we have here can measure a range of 0 to 2% CO2. So if we were to look at the probe itself at the top here, uh, we see the head of the probe, which has the chamber with the light source and the optical filter, which then connects to a signal conditioning box uh, which converts the signal to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, which is then fed into the data logger. And it also comes with a power supply, uh, which powers the circuitry of the signal conditioning box. Now, this particular probe can come as a voltage or a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So if I unscrew uh, the head over here and disconnect that, this is the main sensor port. And uh, this particular section over here is the uh, 4 to 20 milliamp signal conditioning box. Uh, if you uh, wanted to do it as a voltage, you'd have a separate 
connection to that. But either way, we have the 40 to 20 milliamp with us today. Okay, so we'll now connect everything up. The first thing we need to do is take the cover off the ELO 37. Next thing we need to do is ensure that channel one is set to 40 to 20 milliamps. You'll see that the jumper is uh, on the first two pins over there, which is 40 to 20 milliamps. And we don't need to bother with the power over here because the actual uh, transducer itself has its own power supply. So the wiring on this probe has two pins, where brown is the input signal and blue is the ground signal. So we can connect that to channel one. Now, if we were to look at the terminal board, uh, we can see a number of inputs. So each of the channels has three pins. So uh, we have ground, then we have the input signal, and then we have uh, plus V, which is the source for the power, if you wanted to power the sensors. But we're not using this today, and we're only using the input and ground. So as I said, uh, brown is the input signal, and blue is uh, ground in this case. So we'll feed those in, like that, and then uh, do the screw terminal. Now it's worth noting that different 4 to 20 milliamp transducers can be wired differently uh, depending on the way they're designed. They could be uh, self-powered or loop-powered. They come in 2-wire, 3-wire and 4-wire. But in this particular case it's quite simple, it goes into the input and ground. So the next thing we need to do now is plug in the power supply to the signal conditioning box. So if I plug that in here like that and connect this So we now connected the signal conditioning box to the power supply and you can see here that it's flashing. So if I switch uh, the light off and switch the monitor off as well, you'll see the light source flashing in the probe itself. What we can now do is configure the software. So if we load the environment software, we'll go to settings, configuration, change, and then quick. Click on next. We'll choose COM4, because I checked in device manager what the actual COM port is. Then click on next. It finds the ELO 37 with address number two. Click on next. We'll enable channel one by double clicking on it. And we'll change the input uh, to be a 40 to 20 milliamp input. And we'll call it CO2. Then click on uh, program. And then click on finish and restart the software. You can see some current. So the next thing we need to do now is to actually uh, put some scaling in. So if I uh, close the environment software, uh, what we need to do is to go to the environment folder. So if we go to the environment folder, open them up, you'll see that there's a user.psc. Uh, file. This is a scaling file. So if we double click on that, now I've uh, already created this. Um, but if you look at it over here, um, we've got uh, a number of parameters that we need to do. So name CO2, let's change that to CO2, conditioner equals 373. Now that basically means is it 40 to 20 milliamps or uh, voltage. So if I open the environment manual, you'll see in the manual that 373 is for 40 to 20 milliamps. Uh, sensor equals one, that's the first sensor. Uh, units, we'll call it PPM. Out of range, we leave as zero. All these parameters you can find uh, in the actual manual. Um, so out of range basically means treat it as a sensor failure uh, if it goes above that range. Um, 
And then we've got uh, places, that's the number of decimal places. We'll leave it as zero. Uh, methods equals zero, uh, which basically you don't really need to know about. Number of points equals two. So that's basically your two points that you want to choose. You can have more than two points. We're going to go with four milliamps and 20 milliamps. So we've got raw one equals four, which is four milliamps. Scaled one equals zero. So in this particular case, four milliamps is equal to zero ppm. And raw two, which is the uh, uh, 20 milliamps, will be the maximum, which is 20,000 ppm. So if I close that, save that, and if I run the environment software, settings, configuration, change, and then advanced this time, then go to locations, and go to the channel, and then click on edit. It should be at 40, 20 milliamps uh, either way. So the sensor, you can actually have it as uh, 40, 20 milliamps here, but we're gonna change that to the actual scaling file that we just created, and then click on okay, and then click on okay again, and then click on program, and okay. Close that up. We can now exit the software and start it again. Now, as you can see, the uh, CO2 level is quite high. It's 2,200 ppm, and it's normally around 400 ppm outside. Now this is because I'm in a room, I've got the doors closed, I've got the windows shut, I've even uh, got the uh, windows sealed to try and reduce the road noise from uh, outside when I'm recording this video. So what I'm going to do shortly is uh, open the window and see how the CO2 level drops. It should drop to around 400 ppm. So it's been a few minutes now and you can now see that the actual CO2 levels have actually dropped to a more reasonable level now. Uh, which is in line with what you'd expect really and you can hear the cars outside there with the windows open um, so yeah uh, this basically concludes um, uh, this application video on uh, using the environment system uh, with a co2 sensor uh, so thank you for watching uh, and check our website and youtube page for more information